Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Antonio Salvador. I'm from Third World Network, and we have been engaging this process, the legally binding instrument on transnational companies. I am also a trade union lawyer connected with Centro Trade, uh, trade, trade Union in the Philippines. Uh, around 2009, I handled a case for 60 dismissed Coca-Cola workers. They were drivers and helpers delivering Coca-Cola products all over Metro Manila in the Philippines and the nearby provinces. Uh, these 60 individuals uh, were illegally dismissed by Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. forcing us to file a case with a labor arbiter. Unfortunately, despite the evidence showing that Coca-Cola was engaged in labor-only contracting, well, we basically lost the case at the labor arbiter level. Coca-Cola was saying that the real employer is a unknown a uh, uh, company called Conception Lines and Freight Industries and uh, during the course of the proceedings before the labor arbiter, none of the uh, representatives of Conception Lines even showed up. Not one paper was filed on behalf of Con Conception Lines. Everything was being done by Coca-Cola. And to make it even worse, Coca-Cola presented a contract between Conception Lines and itself saying that the uh, Conception Line is actually the real employer and even gave the address, it's number 6, Ilang Ilang Street, St. Mary's Subdivision in Antipolo City. So I asked one of the workers, or I think two of them actually, to take a picture and what they, what they found and what we found and we in fact presented in court is um, an abandoned old house that's uh, basically abandoned, very old house, and that's supposedly the official address of, of Conception Lines. Despite that, we lost at the level of the labor arbiter, as I mentioned earlier on, forcing us to appeal before the National Labor Relations Commission. And even at the National Labor Relations Commission, the ruling was the same. The decision of the labor arbiter was affirmed, saying that Coca-Cola was not the real employer, and, it, and instead it was uh, Conception Lines. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we were forced to go up to the Court of Appeals, but um, by then the case had been pending for almost three years. So you can just imagine the anguish and the anxiety of the workers. And they asked me if I can just settle the case and we can just, you know, all of us can speak to the management of Coca-Cola and try to settle the case. So at the end of the day, we were able to settle the case, but they got pennies, no? Um, they got a range from 1,000 euros up to 3,000 euros. Of course, um, for them, it's a huge money, but under labor laws in the Philippines, they should have gotten reinstatement at Coca-Cola. They should have gotten a full back wage in Coca-Cola, which exceeded that amount that were actually given to them. Um, so yeah, so this just shows you the difficulties that we encounter in uh, developing countries where the juridical system, the justice system, um, let's put it diplomatically, um, has many challenges. And so uh, for us, it's just really, really important to have a legally binding instrument for transnational corporations. Because in this case, uh, the 100%, the I think almost 100% owner of Coca-Cola Philippines was a United States corporation. Mm -hmm. um, if we had an LBI, the workers would have gone to the an international tribunal or the jurisdiction of the United States and file a case directly against the Coca-Cola head office in Atlanta, in Georgia. So just it, it just shows you, you know, it's really really important that we have a legally binding instrument, and hopefully uh, through the negotiations we we'll, we will actually have one. So with a legally binding instrument, we want the transnational company to be jointly and severally liable for the human rights violations, labor rights violations, and, and environmental degradation that, that is committed for them by their subcontractors, by, by their subsidiaries, by their branches, and everyone else working within the global value chain.